Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, welcome to the latest hour of, let's talk about something. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the 1099s and the Schedule C's and the 1040s. Now, many of you have been following Schedule C's, but you've not been filing them the correct way. And that is your fault! That is your fault! That is your fault! The first thing we're going to do, since it is 2021, let's go ahead and look at the Schedule C, because many of you are going to have to fill out the Schedule C! The Schedule C, the Schedule C, the Schedule... <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a little bit of Isley Brothers in our background, featuring Ronald Isley. Talking about friends and families, y'all know about them friends. And family. Break out the food and the drinks, it's gonna be a You know what I'm talking about? We gonna have a party today. It's the first of the year. Let's go ahead and get this started. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is the year of perseverance. Look, hold on. Use Schedule C, 1040, to report income or loss from a business you operated or a profession you practice as a sole proprietor. Ladies and gentlemen, how much do you do as a sole proprietor? Okay? I need you guys to pay attention to why you're filling this out. So get to irs.gov and download the instructions for the Schedule C. Okay? We got some things to talk about. Now, what I'm going to do, hold on, because I have to file. That's right, I'm gonna be filing, ladies and gentlemen. And look, if you ain't filed in the last 20 years, don't worry about it, you only have to go back seven years. And you file for those last seven years, ladies and gentlemen. And you write things off. And you declare your losses. You declare your expenses. And when, since you, especially if you ain't filed in the last 20 years, guess what you do? You file the accrual method of filing. Now, I need to show y'all something so y'all can get to where I'm at, okay? Because y'all need to be where I'm at in order for you to get to where I'm going. Do you get what I'm saying? Well, if you ain't where I'm at, you can never understand what I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Let me show y'all how I got here. I put in, so that y'all get it, Watch this, http forward slash, forward slash, without the colon, with the colon, sorry, apps, A-P-P-S dot I-R-S dot gov. Okay, so we're going to go there, and I'm just going to go to A-P-P-S apps dot gov, and um, now this one is called pick list, so, but we, we, we're not going to go to pick list, we're going to go to A-P-P. Okay, because it ain't even APPS, it's APP. So we're just going to go to APP and we're going to see what page it brings us to. Oh, it's a 404. Okay. Uh-oh, got to undo that. We do that. Okay, and we're going to go here first. We're going to go to IRS.gov. Need y'all to follow me. And then in the search bar... Soon as it pops up, get on out of here. We don't care about your tax meeting needs. Get that junk out of my face. I'm sorry, this is IRS. I can't type in the search bar because this junk is blocking me. How can you help me? You can get this junk out of my way. Y'all just hold on one second. Okay, I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still trying to let this catch up, but I'm listening to this song by Isley and his brothers. And you know what I'm finding? This is, they're keeping in harmony with their style. Because this was their style, ladies and gentlemen. So let's do this. A-P-P-S-P-I-C-K-L-I-S-T. Pick list. That's what we're doing. We're doing apps pick list. Oh, look at that. We got the Jacksons and they don't ever want to say goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. My search did not return any results. But this is your, that's your code. That ain't mine. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to give y'all a shortcut on how to get here. 
and it ain't giving me what I'm asking for. It's the official website. This official website ain't helping out. Hey, Mike, y'all hold on for a second. You know, I watched a video on YouTube yesterday, and it talked about how Eminem went after Mike, did a video about Mike, about his hair on fire and all that stuff. I remembered a little bit about that. And how Mike tried to sue Eminem to get the video blocked from being put on air and everything, and didn't go too bad. The only problem is <laughs> Eminem, the label that was producing the album, Michael went and bought the company. <laughs> he controlled it. Ladies and gentlemen, you talk about the pimp move. Mike is like, what if you ain't beating me. I will own you. <laughs> and so that's it. Okay, look, ladies and gentlemen, for use on the redesigned pick list pages, general information. So we have a pick list, tips and filters to file download listings. No, we're just looking for the, uh-oh. A, Schedule A, Form 8610, Carryover Allocation, okay? But that's for low-income housing. So there got to be another carryover allocation form. So that's what we're going to do. Hey, hold on. I'm actually finding that there's quite a bit of stuff here that might be beneficial. And this is just me. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Hold on. We don't consider nothing about no generation skipping. We ain't nobody no skipping no generations. We don't do that stuff around here. Okay, we don't do that stuff around here. Oh, by the way, if the IRS sends you one of those frivolous letters, appeal that junk. Don't just rebut it, appeal it. Okay? Y'all just need to understand it's an administrative agency. Don't just let them send you something saying your junk is frivolous. No, you better appeal that. You ain't got no authority to say my junk is frivolous. Mother, your junk is frivolous, mother. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to get you the pick list information and get you to the site. File download listings. Okay. About file listings. Forms and publications, irs.gov website contains hundreds or even thousands of items to help you find what you need quickly and easily. Our listing obligation allows you to filter and sort your results. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we just tried that and it didn't let me filter and sort the result, results, resorts. Uh, let's see. Dang it, see, I, I want the list, I want the page that I found. So it ain't gonna let me do the page that I found. Because I just put in pick list and it didn't do it. So watch this. Hold on. 1, 1,000. You know what? I did need to see that uh, carryover form. So I'm going to click on that because I'm going to do this. This is going to be the first thing. Then I'm going to duplicate this page so it's saved on my computer. I need to keep that. Now while I'm on this page, I'm going to go to search. I don't want to do that. I said search. Wait a minute. This ain't supposed to be on its own page. Hold on, y'all. We got a problem. I didn't take this off of this page. Get back over where you belong. Come on now. Move on out of the way because he got to get back home. He ain't even supposed to be all the way over here. This is supposed to be all the way up in the corner here, y'all. All the way up in the corner. Hold on. Don't go too far. You can go all the way down here. You get back to where you belong. Ain't nobody told you to be moving away. Uh-uh, you ain't got no right to be leaving. Mother, sorry. I don't know where he thought he was going. Can't get away from me. It don't work like that. Now, we're on this page right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we're going to do. Because we're looking for something particular. C-A-R-R-Y-O-V-E-R. -R -E we're doing carryovers. Excuse me, I got to drink some hot chocolate. Mmm, that's some good hot chocolate cappuccino mix. All right, that's what I do. Foreign tax carryover. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, that's low-income housing. Schedule K, tax allocation. Don't want that carryover. We want a basic carryover. 
No. Uh, that's Schedule A again. We already talked about that. Taxes for failure to distribute, carryover, excess, distribution, undistributed income, instruction for Schedule K, uh, business tax credits, a list of forms claiming business tax credits, and complete explanation about when carryovers, credits, and deductions cease. Refresh expiring distribution carryovers of private foundations. Oh, I want the private foundations because we need this. This is what we're doing. You see what happens when all you do is you just look and research and all that you need. Look, can a private foundation make an election to treat a qualifying distribution as made out of coupons in order to refresh expiring express distribution carryovers under code 4942? The answer is, oh, you cannot refresh the life of an excess qualifying distribution carryover beyond the five year period set forth in blah, blah, blah by making an election to treat it as a current year qualifying distribution as made out of coupons. It has been brought to the attention of IRS that some private foundations may be attempting to refresh or renew, prolong their expiring excess qualified distribution carryovers under code 4942, beyond the five year limitations in this matter, which is not permitted under the regulation. The following discussion is intended to supplement instructions in part eight. Oh no, excuse me, 13 of form 990 PF, private foundations. So as a private foundation, this is the form that I'll be needing to do for 2020. Do you see what I'm saying? Do y'all see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Okay, get to that later. This is a tax date for me, ladies and gentlemen. Code section, blah, blah, effectively requires private foundation other than operating foundations to make qualifying distributions at least equal to the distribution amount for the tax year. An excise tax is imposed on the shortfall, referred to as undistributed income. Treat qualified distributions as made, first, out of the undistributed income of the prior tax year, second, out of the undistributed income out of the current tax year, unless the foundation elects to treat all or parts of the made out of coupons. Uh oh. And third, out of coupons. Thus, coupons, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing coupons. We kept telling you guys about the five year limitations for bonds. We limited ours to five years. It's even for the distribution, five years. We're well within the five year period. Just want you all to know. We started in December of 2017. Just want you all to pay attention. A foundation may make an election to treat a qualifying distribution as made out of coupons for several reasons. The foundation may have undistributed income for more, one or more tax years preceding the prior tax year and thus need to correct deficient distributions for such years. The foundation may want to qualify a pass-through foundation under code blah 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 and may want a donor foundation to receive credit for a qualifying distribution under this code. Contributions to private non-operating foundations or contain or certain controlled organizations now, we are about to, I have some research I have to do, okay? Now, it says, if not used in its current tax year, okay? So, we have to do it 2022, 2024. I mean, 2022, 2023, have to do it, because all of ours exceeds $100,000. Yay! Now, hold on. You see, they said they can't convert it to coupons, but what you didn't hear them say is the way that they can do it. They're telling them that they can't do it, but they didn't explain how they can do it. And that's what some companies have decided to do. They decided to figure out we can do it this way. But you ain't doing it that way is what the IRS is saying. You're going to do it my way, my way. When I say no, she's in control, she... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. 
I just thought I'd go back to Usher for a second, you know, because, you know, nobody heard of him anymore. He, he like, he disappeared. Usher, my boy, you know what I'm saying? So, I ain't talking about Usher. Don't nobody say nothing about Miss Jenkins, because Usher is all right in my book. He done made some mistakes, but you know what? That young man done learned it, learned it, did, 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 did from his mistakes. And it's kind of hard because most people don't learn did, 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 did from their mistakes. Yeah, these are all the forms I had to download. Some of them I downloaded twice because I wanted to make sure I downloaded them. You know what I'm saying, Burn? You know what I'm saying? 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 All right. Let's get back to discussion. Here is our discussion, ladies and gentlemen. By the fact that we're downloading that file, that's for the research day because that's what our team is working on. We won't be just be setting up because we have to make sure, uh-oh, then we got tax-exempt bonds. Ooh, wait, y'all just don't know what's going on because all sat packs are converted into bonds. Y'all just don't know. See, when y'all return y'all sat pack to SATCOM, we convert it into a bond. We send you a bond. It will have its own bond number and so on 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 and so forth. So the first thing we're going to, I'm going to click on this. We're not going here. I'm just going to save this for later because I'm going to need this. This is a research day. I don't do this often. As a matter of fact, the last time I've done this, I can't even begin to tell you. I really can't. I can't. I wish I could, but I couldn't because I can't. I hope this thing pulls up because what are you? Oh yeah, I was supposed to download this form. So let me go to the IRS page for this form. Okay. Got so many other pages that claim they have what we need and they ain't got what we need. Hey Mike, um, let me go ahead and explain this to the people. Uh, you, Tito, and you know, uh, Randy and all of y'all. Y'all hold on for a second. I gotta, I gotta talk to the people for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a tax person that I use and she's more than a tax person I got to know her I've been knowing of this young lady for the last 10 years we've been in communication for 10 years she is a person whom I was helping and in the midst midst you see that word right there midst of helping um, I've kept in touch I called her and found out that she had corona. I was concerned, so I texted her, called her, she didn't call me back. I got pissed off. Had to let her know, do you not understand that I'm not calling you to ask you about nobody's taxes? I'm calling you because I'm concerned about your health? We had that conversation. And so we moved on past it. I called her the other day and she didn't answer her phone. And I was like, oh, so we back to that again but I didn't call her and say that. She said she texted me back. I never got the text. She was at a funeral. She was burying her father. Her father just passed this past week. They just, I mean, passed, and they just buried him this past week. Subsequent to the father passing and the burial, her mother has had a stroke. She had a blood clot in the brain and suffered a stroke as a result and is in intensive care at this time. That's how her year ended. Ladies and gentlemen, for many of you, you're going to have a difficult time this year. I apologize that you're going to have to experience that. No one has anything good to say about 2021. No one. I don't know a single person on this planet that has anything good to say about 2021. No one will have anything good to say about 2022. I guarantee it. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you explain it. I don't care how you jot it down. 2022 is going to be worse than 2021. Let somebody prove me wrong by the end of this year, if they can even make it to the end of this year. I apologize. As I said in the last video, the Ebola Marburon virus, Marburg, M A R B U R G, Marburg, the e Marburg Ebola virus. That's in Sion, X-I-A-N, Sion, J 
just like if you're saying S E E O N or S E O N, take a S and put it in front of Eon. Sion, that's the name of the city. Sion, 13 million people are on lockdown. Well, that was last report. 13 million people. It's probably more than that. As I said, if Ebola, I said it weeks ago, said it years ago, said it months ago. If Ebola and Corona decide they want to elope and get married without telling anybody, y'all got a lot y'all going to be paying for. Okay? Front row seats and everything. Tax exempt bonds, ladies and gentlemen. Now, watch this. You see this right here? Tax exempt bonds. You know what? We're going to right click. Oh, come on now. Give me my right click. Okay. We're going to do a search for tax exempt bonds. Now, don't no, uh, follow me. One quick C. Okay. Watch this. P R I B A T E. No, we want we don't want private there. P R I B A T E tax exempt private bonds because we're dealing with private bonds. Okay? We we don't want to deal with them um them public bonds, publicly traded bonds and things like that. See Citigroup keeps coming up number one. We don't care about that. We want exactly what I was looking for. Tax exempt bonds, IRS tax exempt bonds, we'll take care of that. Private activity bonds. Woo wee! Private activity bonds. Woo wee! Private activity bonds. Woo wee! Tax exempt bond statistics. We don't we want the tax exempt private activity bond. Private activity bonds. That seems to be the qualifying word, ladies and gentlemen. An introduction. Private activity bonds. An introduction. This is Congress.gov. Congress is going to explain what is a tax exempt private activity bond. Okay? Many tax exempt revenue bonds are issued for activities Congress has classified as private but must of benefit most of the benefit from the activities blah 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 blah. Most benefit from the activities blah 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 blah. So let's find out what an introduction of this is. Real quick. I just decided to put it in. Might as well, y'all need to take this trip. Some of y'all are not going to be interested in this because you don't understand the depth of the information. Depth. Okay. D-E-P-T-H. Depth, the dip, 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 depth. That's when they say that's deep, they're talking about that depth. So let's go, Michael. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I was drinking my nectar. That's right. It's a cappuccino. So we're going to just read the summary. We're not going to read anything else because this is for me. This ain't for y'all. Okay? This is for me. Y'all not doing no private activity bonds? Shoot. We are trying to make sure... Our bonds are classified the proper way because we want to follow the code. Follow the yellow brick code. Y'all heard me say that before. Don't want to let you go. Never going to let you go. Oh. Go ahead. Never going to say what? No, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, by the way, let me pause y'all for a second, okay? One second, everybody. You guys are going to love this. I just took a break and I came back and looked at this for the first time. Let's do the overview. The federal tax code classifies state and local government bonds as either governmental bonds or private activity bonds. Generally, the interest on state and local government bonds is exempt from taxation. How is that possible? when they're engaged in commerce. There is no constitutional right to issue a bond. The government does not have the right to issue bonds and make a profit. Lord have mercy. Whereas the interest on private activity bonds is not tax exempt. However, the federal code allows state and local government to use tax exempt bonds 
to finance certain projects that would otherwise be classified as private activity. Private activities that can be financed with tax exempt bonds are called qualified private activities. Ain't that interesting, huh? Interesting, huh? So they create their own laws to make themselves tax exempt when they engaged in commerce. That is interesting, ain't it? Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's this thing called equal protection of law. Not under the 14th Amendment, like I said, under the Declaration of Independence. That equal protection of law says this, that they don't get to make private whatever they choose to make private, and you don't get to make private whatever you choose to make private. Okay? I am not saying that you get to do whatever you want to do, just like they don't get to do whatever they want to do. But if they have the right to have private bonds, so do we. So let me prove that without just saying it. Let's not let it be a presumption. Let's let it be a fact. Now, tax-exempt revenue bonds, don't care about tax-exempt revenue bonds, don't care about private activity bonds at this point. Uh, don't care about government bond. Nope. Nope. Still private activity. They're still talking about private activity. Why should developers use tax exempt bonds with public private partnerships? Interesting, huh? Let's do this one right here. This is Utah governor. This is Luther, ladies and gentlemen. He's singing about a house and how it is not a home. Ladies and gentlemen, a house is not a home when it's not a home. Sorry. He even talks about rooms being rooms. When then there's nothing there but gloom, but oh. Sorry, apologize for that. No, I don't. Private activity bonds program is Utah's tax exempt bonding authority created a creating a lower cost, long term source of capital for the federal under the Federal Tax Act of. 1986 ladies and gentlemen 1986 they created for themselves the authority to do this they these government entities allow themselves to issue bonds pay attention engaging in commerce which is against the law because anytime the government engages in commercial activities they lose any and all claim to sovereignty. It's a long-standing rule, principle of law. So I, I only stopped because it says, why should developers do the so-called qualifying activity bond, private activity bond, okay, are issued for the benefit of private individuals are issued for the benefit of private individuals. Hold on. Private activity bonds are issued for the benefit of private individuals, which means they cannot be tax exempt. It has to be for the benefit of the public, not the benefit of the private. Government bonds are used for public purposes and benefit the general public. So they created these private bonds for private individuals so that they are tax exempt. How many of these corporations you think are not qualifying under this? Well, you guys are about to qualify under it. Well, hey, I ain't talking about this. I'm talking about everybody else. Come on now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, private bonds, when they're done the correct way, like I said, there is an exemption, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere. Everybody keeps talking about their exemption account. There's exemptions everywhere. Now, this is for the state of Utah. 
says the owner buyer of a tax exempt bond does not pay federal income tax on the interest received on such bonds. Consequently, tax exempt bonds bear lower interest rates than bank loans and taxable bonds. This lower borrowing cost is passed on directly to the borrowing entity. Why should manufacturers use tax exempt bonds? Ladies and gentlemen, we are a private tax exempt foundation, nonprofit organization. Of course, our bonds are going to be tax exempt. We're not making a profit off of our bonds. That's not how we operate. You know, it's driving me crazy. Still in love. Still in love, so in love, still in love, so in love with me. I say, say you're going to be, are you going to be, say you're going to be, are you going to be, say you're going to be, say you're going to be, are you going to be? It's driving the man crazy, ladies and gentlemen. Can somebody help him? Okay, these are all state. So every state seems to have this very same program, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be? Say you're going to be? Are you going to be? Say you're going to be? Are you going to be? Say you're going to be? Well, well. Well, well. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel does the same thing. Ain't that interesting? The whole world is into the bond game. Uh, my name is James. James Game. <laughs> JJ is what they call me for short. Ladies and gentlemen, fundamentals of tax exempt financing. Now pay attention. This is 501c3s. Pay attention. The primary federal tax statute dealing with tax exempt bonds for 501c3 organization requires. So let's find out what it requires, okay? We're going to copy this part right here. Oh, still in love with me. Yeah. That's my boy Luther, y'all. Now, okay, qualified use versus private use. Section 145 of the Code, Primary Tax Exempt Status Statutes Dealing with Tax Exempt Bonds, all requires all property financed by the tax exempt bonds to be owned by the 501c3 organization. Requires all property financed by the tax exempt bonds. You can finance with tax exempt bonds! I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. People keep asking me how do they buy homes and how do they buy cars? And they don't understand it's all right there in the law, but they keep asking me. And I know the information's right out there for you. Come on now, Sal this is Solomon Brook. Ladies and gentlemen, the late Solomon, this man right here, could sing. Y'all may not know that. Now I know y'all know the song. Tell him Solomon. Y'all just gotta understand this man, long career, and did not get the accolades that he deserved. Look, here's the thing. I didn't know about Solomon until I was much older. Until I was in my 40s. What the flying fart? Okay, and I only knew about Solomon because I was searching for music and I was doing uh, Ray Charles and Ray Charles did a song called Ain't None of Us Free. Okay, if one of us is chained and Solomon did the same song and I'm listening to Solomon like Solomon, you did all right. And then I went and got my boy Craig Armstrong, Space Between Us and Solomon Burke, they're both on the same movie because it was a soundtrack. Ladies and gentlemen, I would not have known. I think it was um, the, one of the Patrick Swayze movies he was in. I, 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 it was either Ghost or the other one aside from Ghost. Because you know Patrick, the late Patrick Swayze? Yeah, that man suffered in the end of his life and I feel so sorry for him. I like Patrick Swayze because she's gone like the wind. Okay? Tax-exempt bond proceeds must be used for activities related to the 501c1 
501c3 organization's exempt purposes. Yay! Accordingly, section 145 of this code requires that 95% of the proceeds from the tax exempt bonds be used for exempt activity purposes of the organization. I'm so glad we're not a 501c3. Okay? We're a 508. But I do like the private use. So, I want to let you guys know, study the code. It's right there for you. Study the code. It's right there for you. You make me feel so brand new. See, at first, if you would have read this, you would have thought that only state agencies could use private exempt bonds. But I told you, did you hear me say equal protection of law? And we just learned that private foundations can do the same thing. Okay, so again, principles of law. All you have to do is study maxims of law. Once you understand maxims of law, then you start looking at everything through maxim, not through no statute. They must follow the principle of law, ladies and gentlemen. That's why statutes are only prima facie evidence of law, because all law must follow lawful principles. Okay, go and tell the principal I'm on my way. You heard what I said. Okay. Increase use of multifamily private activity bonds. Multifamily? You mean families get to use these too? Ain't that, uh, ain't that about, how come nobody told me that? Ladies and gentlemen, do you see how many different states? Look, multifamily bond program. Who is this for? Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all really need to understand. Support hospital access to tax-exempt bond financing. American Hospital Association. That's 2017. Because hospitals are profit organizations. That's why they need to have a new initiative to make them exempt. Look at this, here it is again. Private activity bonds issued by the EIRA, Environmental Home and Environmental Improvement and Energy Resource Authority, are tax exempt securities issued on behalf of private companies and or nonprofit entities for qualifying blah blah blah. Yes, private activity bonds can be issued by nonprofit entities when they're done according to the law, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna give you this, I cannot give you much more than this. If you have a private organization, you may issue bonds, but you have to have something backing your bonds up. You can't just issue bonds just by calling it a bond. A bond must be backed by something of substance. Okay? Just gotta let you know. See, you can have a tax exempt bond, but see the problem is, we're talking about a private bond. We're not talking about just any old bond because a lot of bonds are out there for the public. So they're taxable. So that's why we do it the way we do it. You know what I'm saying? So this is just me bringing this to you guys' attention. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I can't keep you. I just was um, trying to bring you this information so that you guys will have an idea of what's going on. You saw what I did. You saw how I typed it in. You saw what my angle was. Okay, and it all started from here. Okay. Now, let's see if I can, I just want to reduce this page. I don't want to reduce the whole thing. Uh, it's okay. We, we won't even do that. Tax advantage bonds. Excuse me? Tax advantage bonds. Yeah, that makes no sense, but that's form 8038. So you're going to have to know what you're doing. You just can't just do it. Now, I apologize that we couldn't get that form, uh, that page that had all of the forms, but go back and find the years that you did not complete the taxes and complete it and do your write-offs look I can't tell you how to fill it out because it's not my thing but this will tell you how to fill it out do you understand this tells you what to do okay for instance uh, we need F then we're gonna put C A R R Y O V E R I put carryover Let's see if it has carryover anywhere in this document. 
okay? We're gonna do that right there. Carryover of actual expenses from Form 8829. If you use Form 8829 in a prior year and you had actual expenses that you could carry over to the next year, you cannot claim those expenses if you are using a simplified method. Instead, the actual expenses from Form 8829 that were not allowed will be carried over to the next year and you will use actual expenses to figure your deductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this tells you how to do carryovers. Okay? Carryover of unallowed expenses from a prior year that are not allowed in 2021. Operating expenses. Enter the amount of your last 8829 on line 43. So 43 is where you put your unqualified expenses. Excess casualty losses and depreciation. Enter the amount entered on 8829. Okay, I don't know if 8829 applies. Okay, I can't tell you 8829 applies. Okay, I can just tell you that I'm going to look into it with this song. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't like the fact that Luther Vandross, when he sang this, he was singing to a man, killing me softly with his song. He literally used the exact same words Roberta Flack would use. I did not appreciate that from Luther. Yeah, so that's why everybody talked about him when he was no longer here. I ain't going to talk about Luther when he ain't here. I'm going to get back and talk about him. <laughs> anyway, if you don't file a 2020 form 8829, then your carryover for the prior operating expenses is the amount of operating expenses shown in part five of the last form 8829, if any, that you filed to claim the deduction for businesses' use of your home. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a sole proprietor, you get to write off your expenses for business use of your home on the 8829. If you did not file a 2020 form 8829, then your carryover for prior year excess casualty losses and depreciation is the amount of excess casualty losses and depreciation in part five of the last form 8829. So I gotta also file a form 8829 when I file my taxes. Because I am i haven't filed these taxes. This will be the first time that I'll be filing. He felt all flushed with fever, ladies and gentlemen. Embarrassed by the crowd. He felt that he found his letter and he read it out loud. Then put his business out there in the middle of the street. And he prays that he would send him. And, and what he did, he kept right on strumming his pains with his fingers this is what luther's singing about y'all gonna talk to luther i i, I done told luther about that okay uh we're gonna download this because i need it wait 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 i think i already have this yeah i have this already Whew, i already have this um what happens is this is this is the schedule c and what i told somebody i would do because i spoke to somebody and i told him what I needed to do, see, we already have this. This is Schedule C. What I told the person I had to do was I had to find where to put the carryover information. Okay? I had to find out where to put the information. And so that's line number 43 would be one of the lines. So let's go to line number 43. Clearing, clearing who? Strumming what? With what? Do you hear that? No, I said 43. Did you? No, that's the vehicle. So that's not line 43. Huh. Cost of goods sold, inventory, other costs. It gave me the wrong number, y'all. Wait, hold on. Let's go back here. We're going to find this out. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, I'll show you. I know what the problem is. We said line number 43. That's on the 8829 form. Okay? 
Line number 43 on the 8829 form. See? 8829, line number 43. There it is right. Oh, wait, come on back. Don't be going nowhere. Line number 43. So I need line number 43 on this form right here. Somebody strum that man's pain. Somebody sing in somebody's life. It, Luther's song wasn't that bad because he did the highs and the lows and I give Luther credit for that you know I give Luther a lot of credit because like I said he did that first album and I thought the first song never too much I thought that was man Luther you can sing and I didn't listen to him after that because it was mostly older people listening to Luther and I wasn't trying to be a part of that group. That's why I don't listen to jazz, because old folks listen to jazz. Yeah, y'all heard what I said. Anyway, um, because old people listen to jazz. I'm not a jazz person. Uh, maybe in the future I'll listen to jazz, but not all jazz do I get. Now, I do like some of the commercial jazz. I, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Y'all heard what I said. I do like some of the commercial jazz. But that's it. I don't want to. I want a save file. Yeah, we're going to open it up. I'll save it that way. Somebody help that woman because she lonely. I don't know why she lonely. She's got all them, them people around her. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I talked about yesterday the late Betty White. And I am very sorry to see Betty White no longer here. But that woman was 90... 90 99 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Get on out of here. 99! Okay. I said she was 100, but she was 99! Might as well be 100. Look, it says form 8829 to figure the allowable expenses for business use of your home on Schedule C and any carryover to 2022 of amounts not deductible in 2021. You must meet specific requirements to deduct expenses for businesses for use of your home even if you meet these requirements your deductible expenses may be limited part four it's just to figure figure out any allowable carryover expenses that are more than the limit okay now you got to see publication 587 business use of your home how many of you people use your home to conduct business so y'all need to be deducting told you sole proprietor ladies and gentlemen Y'all really need to pay attention. And when the... Hold on, let me show you. So that you'll get it. Oh no, this ain't the form. I need the actual form. Where did I put it? It's right here. Whew, thought I missed it. Nope, this ain't it. This is it right here. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, at the top of the form. 12-345... Six seven eight nine. That's your social security number. It is two numbers dash, then the rest of the numbers. Only one dash. That's how you're gonna do your social security number for a sole proprietor. You are not gonna do a social security number for a sole proprietor. You're gonna do it as an EIN number. Pay attention to me. Go back. No, let me let me show it to you because it would be it would be wrong if I was not to show it to you. No, hold on. Let me show it to you. Uh, thirty one. CFR 363.22. Yeah, I want to leave this page. You just hear me say leave? Oh, it says I'm going to lose that number stuff. I don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the whispers, but I'm going to skip past the whipper. The whippers? Hey, Patty. This is You Are My Friend by Patty LaBelle, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I, I would say a song like this is perfect for today. It just it sets the mood for this day. And I'm going to play the song this loud. And this song is going to take us out in this video, okay? And this is You Are My Friend. You are my friend. It's 20, not 22. My friend, my. 
Now, I want to show you why you're going to do it as an EIN number, not a social security number. See the social security number? That's John Doe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's his social security number. It even says social security number. Okay. Okay, social security number, John Doe. Jane Doe, social security number. Y'all see that, right? Ooh. My friend. See, social security number, Joseph and John Doe. So you got to keep social security number. Hold on. Now we're talking about partnerships and sole proprietorships. Hold on. Partnerships and sole proprietorships. See, sole proprietorships. Let's see how you put your... Uh-oh, look at that. When you're doing a sole proprietorship, you do an EIN. Ain't nobody else going to tell you this. Ain't no tax person going to tell you this. And I'm officially a taxpayer. I know I got to pay my fees again. $35 or something like that. I will take care of that. Tell them, Patty, because these people don't understand that I am giving them information that nobody else wants to bring to their attention because people want to hold this information to themselves so that you all can't benefit. So you are here because you know I'm going to talk about the stuff nobody else talks about. And after I talk about it, everybody and their grandmama going to start talking about it. How do I know this stuff? Mama, where did he learn all this stuff at? I told you. I have a rich father, and my father is the most intelligent person in existence. And he provides me the help I need to understand what I need to understand to give the people at the right time. Sorry, it was the right time for you to know it. That's why you're getting it. There'll be some people, tell them, Patty, who will think that I don't know what I'm talking about and who will think that that stuff doesn't add up. And you don't belong here. This is for only the people who understand the information and the reason why the information is being given. How nobody told you about this site, you found this site because you were looking for the information. And if somebody did reference you to this site, it's because they knew you needed the information. So do not doubt the information. Go with the information, understand the information, learn the information and understand how it applies to you and you will benefit from it. Thank you, Petty, because these people have been looking around and they realized I was here all the time. Been doing this, ladies and gentlemen, for over 14 years. Over 14 years. Okay? On YouTube, on video, in the public. I thought you said you started in 2010. Actually, I started before that. I've been having a website since 2005. When I say over 14 years, I ain't joking. I put up a website on a place called tripod.com. Tripod was a free site. It lets you publish for free. Okay? And then they sold to Linux or something. Uh, I forgot the name of the song, the, the website, but just type it tripod.com and you'll see. Been on there since 2005. I put my entire commercial lean process online. The entire thing because I wanted to publish it online to prove my debt against that stupid hospital. When I say that I've been doing this for a while, I didn't just start doing this last week. When I call myself a junior guru and the last of the gurus, it's because when I came in, those guys had already been around. Patty, thank you for bringing us out of here. Bye-bye, y'all.